gifts, tithes, and offerings. given for and to us. And Lord God, is just a small way to be able to honor that gift that we've been given. We've given gifts back to you ourselves. Lord God, we pray for all those who gave, Lord God, that their blessings will be multiplied and that their allegiance to you will be honored. But even to those who desired to give, Lord God, but did not have not, bequeath that blessing on them as well. Lord God, as these resources are received, Lord God, have us at Mount Calvary Baptist Church be great stewards over these resources for today, tomorrow, and the days to come, and for those inside our small church and inside the larger community. We love you and thank you and ask all this in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen again. Just before I leave your presence for a moment, I just wanted to present to some and introduce to others our speaker for today. The First Lady, Reverend Dr. Sarah Lynette Priester, is our native here in Orangeburg. She's married to Pastor Charcy N. Priester Sr. and the mother of Charcy Jr. and Majesty. Lady Priester is a singer and songwriter and scholar. 
She received her bachelor's and master's degrees from South Carolina State University and is currently working on a PhD at the University of South Carolina in English. Her specialization is in African American studies. Presently, she is teaching English at South Carolina State University. Reverend Preacher has enjoyed the privilege of being honored with numerous teaching awards and was conferred an honorary doctorate degree by the Chancellor of the School of the Great Commission Bible College in the fall of 2019. She is also the creator of Mary's Request podcast on Apple, Anchor, Overcast, and Spotify podcast platforms. Lady Priester enjoys serving with her husband at St. Paul Baptist Church here in Orangeburg. She serves as the team leader for the Vessels of Honor Women's Ministry. Over the past 10 years, she has used her ministry gifts to serve in many capacities, including but not limited to lecturer for the Senior Minister's African American Lecture Series during Black History Month, trainer for the Breeders Ministry, Sunday School Teacher, Director for the Youth Choir, and Leader for the Praise and Worship Team, and Host for Women's Conferences and Retreats, and Chairperson for Women's Day Programs, and the Creator of the Champion and Winners Award, and well as well as the Lydia Service Award. Reverend Priester's favorite scripture is first. John 3 14 which states and we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren amen, amen. Reverend Priester believes in the healing power of love amen. we're so thankful to have this powerhouse in the gospel to be able to come and serve us today amen. hope you all have your plates ready and you're to go plates ready as well amen because there will be some overflow the next voice you hear after the song of preparation will be the voice of the holy spirit through reverend priester amen and amen good morning mount calvary happy to be here. Yeah. It's a beautiful day today, yes. Yes. and I feel good, but you know there are days in your life when you have, when you run, when you run across little obstacles and stuff, and you know that anytime you run across obstacles, you can always count on the Lord to bring you through. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm going to hide behind, hide behind the mountain. I am going to hide behind, hide behind the mountain. I'm going to hide behind, hide behind the mountain. Ah! 
I've got a mother behind that mountain. I've got a mother behind that mountain. Where the chilly wind don't blow. One more thing. I've got a father behind that mountain I've got a father Don't you want to go? Uh huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, y'all. Every day was going to be like Sunday. Every day will be a Sabbath day. I want to go there. I want to go there. Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Where the chilly wind don't blow. mother's church years ago that little storefront church on Bay on uh, Russell Street I tell you what and I think I can hear that bass line down in a truly window I can just hear that of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's give the choir a hand. Yeah, when I was sitting over there, I just heard. You know, I just heard that in my spirit. So thank you, Zach. <laughs> I do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is a pleasure to be standing here today. I do want to submit to you that every day when I get up, I make this declaration and I make it in the name of Jesus. When I stand in the morning, in the mirror, I look at myself and I said, in the name of Jesus, everything that belongs to me, everything that is mine, by divine right, come to me in an abundance. And I remember getting a phone call not many days hence, and it was Mount Calvary. Mm. So I'm supposed to be here today, mm. and I'm to be here today. And it has been said that I am a singer and a songwriter, and it had probably about a year ago, is your name Moses? I said, I want to work with him, but I don't know how to get in touch with him. I said, maybe I'll inbox him and reach out to him. So I am here today by divine right, and I look forward to working with you. God bless. Had no idea that 
that I was going to meet him here today. So let's talk. <laughs> I do thank God for your amazing pastor. I like his spirit. I like his energy. I just love his love for God and life. And he is such an, a humble person. And I just love what I've met so far in him. And you need to give him another round of applause because you all are blessed to have such a man of God. God bless you, Pastor. And I wish you the best. I do want to honor my pediatrician who took care of my baby, Dr. Stevens. Thank God for her. And I have to say that because when he was born, he stayed 10 days over. And I was just really, really just worried that they took good care of PJ. And he's 26. If you see him today, he's standing tall and he's doing well. God bless you. And I do honor those that came with me from St. Paul Baptist Church. Again, would you just stand and let me applaud you. St. Paul, stand on up. Look at St. Paul in the house, y'all. Give him a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much. I want to say thank you to some cousins of mine. All I have to do is send a text out, or if they run into me in the street, I'll get in touch with them and they come. These are my cousins from New York, from, from Morsi Projects in New York. You know, Brooklyn. You know, they say, Ness, shut up with your country self. <laughs> so Kim and Dorlet are here. They live here now, but they are my cousins, and I have a cousin here that's visiting with Monika. Thank you all for coming out. I'm not going to be long before you. I do want to honor my husband, Pastor Priester, 27 years of being married. Hallelujah. And I love him just as much today as I did when I first said I do. I honor my children, Charcy Jr. and Majesty. I stand to say that they give me courage to keep showing up and staring life down. Thank you, PJ and Majesty, for sharing me today with them, with this church family. I do want to honor the memory of my mother, my pastor. She would always stand flat foot in the pulpit and say, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. And oh, God, hey, yeah. thank y'all. He's been good to me. Oh, singing, God has smiled on me. He has said. Be free and know God. Hey, yeah. oh, yes, He's been good to. I just want to say this just so, this is verse. She would say this God is the joy, the strength of my life. Without him, I would fall. I know what he is to you. He's my all in all. Come on, you all can say this. Come on, everybody. God, God. Oh, yes, he has. Yes, he has. Whoa. And oh, God, hey, yeah. oh, yes, he's been good to me. Hallelujah. Yes, he has. I want you to call your attention to the book of Luke, chapter number 17 and verse 20. 
I love that your pastor challenged you to write the scriptures so that you can go back later on in the week and study them. This scripture in Luke chapter 17 and verse number 20, it says, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now I want to use for a companion scripture from the book of Romans, chapter number 5 and verse 17. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned, by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I want to reign in life. I want to just confirm that last part. It says, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Come on, tell your neighbor, I want to reign in life. I want to reign in life. Amen. And I want to use for a subject, kingdom woman with the kingdom agenda on a kingdom assignment. Kingdom woman with the kingdom agenda on a kingdom assignment. Father, we thank you for this privilege to preach your word. And we ask now that you would send your anointing. I die to flesh. I die to Sarah. Even if it's something I did not prepare, I give you my mouth now as your mouthpiece. For these are your people and you know the needs of their hearts. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, God, use my mouth as your mouthpiece. Think through my mind and speak through my mouth that these, your people, will leave differently than they came. And let it be for your glory, O oh God, and for their gain, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to start by saying about seven, eight years ago, I wrote a song called Kingdom Woman. And that song has been sung basically every year for about the last five years. We did our Women's Days conferences. And it's just a song that simply says, that I, am a, I have a calling, the high calling of God. I have a vision. I won't perish or fall. I walk by faith and not by sight. Trust in my God with all my might because I am a kingdom woman. And then I ask God to reign in my life. I ask him to rule in my life. Not knowing as I begin to what this song was basically about if you're declaring and decreeing that you are a kingdom woman that's a woman that's different from a woman in the world for a kingdom woman has a kingdom agenda and on a kingdom assignment amen and if you understand what we're reading here in the book of Romans it is by one man that death entered to the world through Adam but by Jesus Christ, we were redeemed, and not only redeemed, but he said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Now, some of you think that when you hear that, that that means you don't have troubles, trials, and tribulations. But I come to submit to you to let you know that if the devil is not knocking on your door, messing with you, causing you heartache and pain, that that means you might not be doing very much. But I come to talk to about five or six of you that have had the enemy on your back trying to turn you back. I just want to let you know that you are in good company because he did it to Paul. He did it to all of those that were trying to build the kingdom of God. 
So do not hold your head down. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discomforted because you find yourself in the middle of some of life's most challenging battles. I just want you to know that Satan is coming to kill your joy. He's coming to kill your vision. He's coming to snap the life out of you. But if you go down, you say, I might be down, but please don't count me out because I will rise again. I will get up with all that God has for me. In fact, I will get double for my trouble, double for my shame because God is on my side. Don't be afraid to be a kingdom woman. Don't be afraid to go in new territory, places where no one else has gone. And will you encounter the warfare that comes along with it? Yes, you will. But know that if you go in the valley, there is a lily. Uh -huh. Know that if you go into trouble, he's right there by your side. But it is what I would call a labor pain where you're really about to give birth to something that has never been born before. So why not go through the fire to come on out as pure gold? Amen. Am I in the right house? Amen. How many of you are going with me? We're not going to be stopped by the devil's tactics. We're not going to be shut down by the devil's strategies. His plans, his schemes, his strategies to take your, uh, your, your mind, to take you off kilter. You got to make up your mind that I'm going to be a kingdom woman. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a kingdom agenda. And I'm going to be on a kingdom assignment. And it comes with a God who is not only our father. See, we know God is our heavenly father. And we are his children. We're the sheep of his pasture. But it also is important for us to know that not only is he father, but he's also friend. Hallelujah. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So you just don't have a, a God who is somewhere off that you can't relate to. The Bible says that he is a father and fathers do something mighty special for their little girls. How many of you know that daddy loves his little girls? You see, a father is going to give you your worth. Your father is going to be that one man in your life to tell you who you are. Your father, even if you have an earthly father, your earthly father is going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to cover you. But most importantly, he's letting you know without even saying it that I'm valuable. That I am worthy. And if you are sitting out there and you don't know the love of a natural father, you have a heavenly father who's telling you that I love you so much uh -huh. that I gave my son, my only begotten son. So you got to know that you are worthy and you have self-worth because God himself loves you. That's what a father would do. A friend is going to stick with you. You know, there are what we call these fair weather friends. I know about a few of them when you fall in trouble. And I'm sometimes glad when God allows me to get in trouble because it lets me know who I can depend on. Amen. See, I don't need you in my life when there's so much sunshine. When I'm going through one of my darkest seasons, that's when I need you to be a friend. Amen. But if you can walk out of my life when I'm going through trials and tribulations, I think I might open the door for you because I don't need you when I am up and up and up. I need you when I'm at my lowest point. So give yourself a hand if you know that you are a good friend. God said, I will be with you. He said, I'm going to be with you. I will never forsake you. He said, I will never leave you. And I know some of you know what betrayal feels like. I know some of you know what it is to have someone abandon you. I know, that, I know you know what it means to have somebody walk out on you. That's not a friend. I think it was uh, Womack. I think she said that's what friends are for. In the good times and in the bad times. I'll be by your side. That's what friends are for. He said, I'll be your friend. But I want to look at the God not only as father, not only as friend, but I have come to know him as the judge. Mm. Hallelujah. He is a judge. 
Hallelujah. And judge, judges make decisions. Mm -hmm. Judges make quality, suitable decisions mm -hmm. about the conclusions that they want to see come out in the end. So we're going to look at a text today that God himself had to come up, make some decisions, and some of the worthy conclusions that came at the end. I want to first start on this Women's History Month. I know y'all thought I lost my place, but I didn't. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> I always have to give God his due. Uh -huh. Amen. The first thing I want to tell you is that the book of Psalms, verse chapter 8, verse number 3, talks about how marvelous are the works of thy hand. It is with his fingers that he's crafted this beautiful world. Amen. The Bible talks about the moon and the stars. We serve a God that's not only father, friend, judge, but he's also a creator. He shows us how to take nothing and make something. He shows us how you're in the middle of darkness. You got to know how to create. Don't depend on anybody else. I told you friends will walk out of your life when it gets dark. But you yourself got to know how to identify with your heavenly father who is also a creator. And when you need something, if something is not there, if it's dark times around you, the Bible says the earth was void and without form, he created. He opened his mouth and he spoke. And the reason it was able to come to pass is because whenever you speak words and it lines up with who you are ethically, it's got to come to pass. You can't just say things out of your mouth and don't believe it. You can't say things out of your mouth and don't be it because God is who he is. He is God. If he said, let there be light, there will be light because he's an ethical God. Amen. And his words got to obey. And so when he look, we look at this earth, beautiful, marvelous, the majesty the, the way that it works on its own. We don't have to go and yell at the grass and say, grow. Grow, grass. Grow. We don't have to go to the flower and say, bud. Bud, it blooms on its own because it has this intelligence that is built in it that God himself gave it, and it can function without any of our help. Mm -hmm. I did not have to help the flower grow. Mm. I didn't have to help the flowers bloom. Because it is built by God himself, the creator, to do what it do on its own. Can I say that, brother? It's going to do what it do. I know it's not good English. I'm the English person. But it's going to do what it do without any help of our own. And I want you to know that your problems that you are facing now, guess what? I know you want to help. I'm the queen of helping out. I'm the queen of trying to fix it. But how many of you know if you just take your hands off it? It'll do what it do. If the grass going to grow, if the flower going to bloom, your problems, God knows how to solve them. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, take your hands off of it. Come on, tell another neighbor, take your hands off of it. Tell them you don't have to worry about it. God already worked it out. Hallelujah. God already worked it out. Hallelujah. But it takes some time. We got some, we got some witnesses here. Mm -hmm. So when the earth was beautifully created, the first day he created the lights. The second day he created the, 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 the dry grass and all of that. The third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. Every day he created, he said, it is good. Everything, when he finished, he knew how to praise himself. See, the reason why we don't have good self-esteem is because we waiting on somebody else to praise us. We waiting on somebody else to tell us we got going on. But you ought to be able to stand up and say, I'm back to the bone because God is my heavenly father. It's good. Hallelujah. It is good. What do we know how to do? There's one cloud in the sky. Everything else is beautiful. All we focus on is that one little cloud. Because we've been trained, shaped, born into iniquity. But I've come in the blood of Jesus to break that curse off of your mind that you can be of gratitude and thank God for the blessings in your life. I know you got some trouble, but 
are some blessings that you have not given any praise for. I want you to take five minutes and praise God for all of the blessings you have in your life. Come on, thank God for all of your blessings. You got your health. You got your strength. You got your right mind. You are able to dress yourself. That wasn't your cooling board. Your bed wasn't your cooling board. You are here to... Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. a mindset change. Come on, tell somebody that's a, that's a mindset change. Come on, tell another neighbor you got to change your mindset. You tell her you got a going on and don't even know it. You are blessed and better than blessed. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You give God praise for that. I bet you that devil will run away from you then. Yes, oh, but as long as you have your pity party, he's going to come right there. Just nobody but you and him. Amen. Come on, Holy Ghost. So I want to I want to get to this so I can rush. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on out the way, Pastor. What I want to say is that Eve was the crowning creation of His creation. From the first to the sixth day, the last thing He created, He noticed that Adam it was not good for Adam to be alone. You see, He created the answer to a problem, and if Eve is the mother of all creation. One of the mindset changes that you must have, women, is that you are the answer to a number of problems. There's something that you carry. It's called the kingdom. It's wrapped up on the end. The Bible says we have these earthen treasures in this vessel. That's who you are. And Eve was the crowning act, the last cherry that he put on the top. And you know, she had everything heart desired. You see, there are three things that every woman wants. Now, she might not have them, mm -hmm. but that don't mean she doesn't want them. Mm -hmm. And if you've wanted them so long and you've never achieved them, that want can turn into something else and get misdirected. See, one of the things that every woman wants is what Eve had. Eve had a role, R-O-L-E, that was distinctively hers. This is my lane. Please don't try to walk in these size 11. Y'all see these size 11? Please don't try to walk in my lane. Come on, I can't get no amens on that. <laughs> These size 11s are a little bit tough to walk in now. Be careful when you want to walk in my shoes. Uh -huh. Stay in your lane, I'll stay in mine. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? Why did I say that? Because I got my role, you got your role. What the rock say? Know your role. Hey. <laughs> if you know your role and I'm my role, then I'm going to blossom and bloom and who God has called me to be. God called her to stand by her man. He gave her dominion along with him, and they had a job to do with naming and having dominion. That's her role. So she had a role. Many of the women in our Women's History Month that we are celebrating, they had a role. They had a significant role. They made tremendous impact because their role. It made them alive. It made them get up in the morning. It made them put their feet in the, on the floor with depression trying to take them out. They still showed up because they had a role. They had a call. 
They had a purpose. They had a destiny. Something of gift, skill, talent that was placed on the inside. That's your role. She had a role. She also, and every woman wants, a romance out of this world. Now, you might not have, but that'll leave you done want. And I don't know that if you got it, you would throw it back. <laughs> every woman wants a romance out of this world. What I mean by romance, y'all think I'm talking about flowers? You think I'm talking about candy? Amen? What I'm talking about is what teaches us what real love is all about. You see, the honeymoon period is going to, I've been married 27 years. I'm telling you now, the honeymoon period has ended. <laughs> Amen? But that's still my butterscotch. <laughs> and I'm here, strawberry shortcake. Hey. Sometimes I'm here, rice with the gravy on the top and a little extra salt. Uh -huh. And a little butter. Uh -huh. That makes it real good. <laughs> but a romance out of this world means that you have what Adam needed, connection. See, some of us have attachment, which is different from connection. See, when you are connected, you are nourished. When you are connected, there's a smile on your face. You know why that smile is on your face? See your wife right there? She got a smile on her face. <laughs> See, that connection means that you have gotten out of being lonely. And loneliness is a psychological disease. It leads to heart attack. It leads to depression. It leads to anxiety. It leads to obesity. You go out here today, I want you to look up what are the benefit, the damages of loneliness? What are the symptoms? So when Adam got with Eve, he had a need, a psychological, physiological need that was being met in that relationship. So when you find a connection, you want to keep that connection. You know, you want to protect that connection. If you got to change, if you got to grow, if you got some healing to do, whatever you have to do, you don't want just to have an attachment. You want to have a connection. connection. So she had a romance out of this world because she had a man, he had a job, and he gave her a place to live. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And you know, every woman wants to be beautiful. Every woman. Why have we let ourselves go? Why have we not taken care of ourselves, invested in ourselves, because somebody told us that we weren't enough and that we weren't worthy, and we just picked up where they left off. But I come today to stand to break that authority of the enemy to say you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of love. You are worthy. You got to love you. You got to take care of you. You got to honor your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. It's all, come on, tell your sister, it's all on you. It's all on you. And you know, Eve was fine because when Adam saw her, he was like, whoa, man. That's how she became woman. He was like, whoa, man. This woman was so fine. Come on, woman. You know why I know she was gorgeous? And I'm not talking about natural things. She was whole. She was whole. She was beautiful because there was no sin. She didn't have any insecurity. She didn't have any depression. The thing, because it's not what goes, come in, it's what goes out that makes you so ugly. And so Eve had all these things. There's another thing that Eve had. So what are the three things? I see my teacher friend over there. Hey, my friend. I'm just being a teacher now. What's the first thing every woman wants? Ooh. A role that is a hers or uniquely hers. What's another thing that a woman wants? She yes, wants a romance, and not just any romance, one that's out of this world. I want to be connected. Mm -hmm. Amen? I don't want to be attached. I want to be connected. Mm -hmm. 
And ladies, I'm giving you some homework. You go home. If you have a, an attachment, you go get that connection. How many are going to do your homework or son? You're going to get some connection. And then the last one is what? You want to be what? Beautiful. That means take care of your mind, your spirit, your soul. And this is what God has revealed to me. Some of us are not as beautiful as we want to because we're holding on to the past. I can't get no help in here. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never be yours. You got to let go of yesterday, show up in today, and you will be beautiful. You'll be happy. You'll be whole. Amen. And lastly, this, this story teaches us about this woman, and this is what is connected to Women's History Month. There was something in Eden that although she had her role, her romance, and she had her beautiful life, beautiful, feeling good about her self-worth, there was something in her that made her go after the fruit. What made her wander off to go after that fruit? What made her question God who created her and told obedience, you should not partake of this tree, any tree freely eat of except this one? What was that? That's what we would call autonomy, or there's a level of independence. See, in your relationship, you can have a connection, but you still have to be an individual. In your marriage, you can still have a connection, but you got to be your own person. These are two people with two different minds. If I, if I lose who I am, then it's only one of us. I have to be an individual in my relationship. You have to be an individual. Then we come together in what we call interdependence. We are depending on each other, but we are independent of one another because we can think for ourselves. But Eve's problem was her independence and longing, which means she wanted more meaning. You can go to work, you can go to church, you can operate in your role, you can have your connection, but there are some things where you can see that life will call you. Sometimes they're called the midlife crisis where you question, I go to work, I got a good job, I make good money. Why am I wanting, well, I need something else. Because there's something in you that's grown, grown. And that's what happened to Eve. She wanted more meaning, maybe, possibly. But any time, women, we get in our independence and it leads us to disobedience, that's when we lose our whole world. Help yourself, independent woman. Take care of yourself. But if it leads to disobedience, it's going to destroy your world. And then we will need the judge who will sit back and say, how can we restore this? And so God allowed his son Jesus to come. And he came through 42 generations. He came to restore what was stolen in Adam. And the Bible says that it was through one man that we now, because when Jesus got up, the Bible says in John chapter 20, it says that he... When he saw the disciples, the first thing he said to them was peace. That's right, that's right. Jesus came in a chaotic world, in a chaotic situation to speak peace. And that word in the Hebrew means shalom. Shalom is a Hebrew word. It deals with the kingdom that's on the inside of you. Because guess what I want you to know? You might be living in this world, but you are of the heavenly. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And what that simply means is when you open your mouth and you speak the word shalom, what did Jesus come to do? To destroy the works of darkness. Everybody say confusion. confusion. Come on, say confusion. confusion. But if you want to get rid of confusion, I decree and declare that every room you walk in, every situation you walk in, just begin to open your mouth and say shalom. Mm. Say shalom. Shalom is going to destroy the darkness of confusion. Shalom is going to destroy the darkness of frustration. Shalom will destroy in the realm of the spirit because the kingdom is in you. So everybody open your mouth and say shalom. shalom. Come on, say it three times. Say shalom. 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 
That means the devil has to back up because you are decreeing peace to every demonic situation. Mm -hmm. Now, how are you going to reign in life? You can't stop the problems, but the problems don't have to have you. You can't stop the confusion, but you can decree shalom. And it's got to back up in the name of Jesus. So for every woman who's celebrating Women's History Month, who has her role, who's seeking a connection, who is taking care of herself, her mind, her body, her soul, who knows it's okay to be independent as long as you don't get in disobedience, I want you to know that you can continue to make your contribution, continue to make a difference, continue to change the world with what God has called you to do, but you must speak shalom. God bless you. has God assigned you to do, to be? What, what, what's your role? Have you found that romance, that connection? God gave us, each and every one of us, a role independently. And he offered up connection. He offered up connection from that very first verse in Genesis, but he made another plan as judge, as she has told us. And he made a connection that through 42 eves later, that connection is named Jesus. Amen. And then there's the beauty. There's the beauty. There is the beauty. God has made us wonderfully, magnificently well. And we're all beautiful in his sight. He has seen who and what we are. The question is, have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you let someone else convince you of something other than what God has created you to do and to be? If you're able, stand on your feet at this moment because now this is the moment of autonomy. This is the moment of autonomy. You have an independent choice to make, an independent decision to make an independent opportunity to choose you this day who you will serve. In our first call, we want to acknowledge those who may have already independently made that choice, that decision to serve God and to serve God only. But we have let the individual clouds, we have let individual voices, we have let other things cloud that for us and distract us and, and, and hurt us. But now we're going to make a decision to revitalize that role that God gave us. You know what God put in your heart to do and to be. It's time to bring that back. You know about the connection that you had with him. Go back to your first love. Because it is only through that connection with him can you even recognize whether you're in a connection or an attachment, amen. And you know the beauty. So right now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here today and you want to revitalize that role, that romance, that beauty, and that autonomy, pray with me. Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity for this day and this Women's History Month that we come before you and we make a decision in our independent selves to recommit to you, to recommit to what you created us to be, and to recommit to allow that to spill over to each and every one that comes in our presence. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Yet if you're here today and you also have a role that's out there waiting, a romance that's out there waiting, beauty that's out there waiting, but you haven't used your autonomy yet to ask him in, this is your opportunity. Those who know the Lord, be in prayer right now. If you're here under the sound of my voice and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is your opportunity. And what that means is not that you have to clean yourself up. You, you, you've already been made. God already fixed it. He's already made it. We can take your hands off. See, salvation isn't about doing something new. It's like what our preacher said today. It's about taking your hands off because God already fixed it. So if right now you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior and your life ain't been going well, but you want him to fix it instead of you fixing it, then this is your opportunity to take a moment and just lift your hands and we'll pray with you. Just lift your hand and we'll pray with you. Just lift your hand and we'll pray with you. There are some hands that I may not be able to see because they may be at home. They may be in the car. They may be in the fellowship area. But let's pray with them a prayer of faith. Amen. And as they stand where they are, then they can believe with us. Lord God, we come to you right now in the mighty master's name of Jesus. Understanding that we've done what we know to do and we have ended up messed up. But right now we want that role. We want that connection with you. We want to see your beauty in us. So now, God, right now, we proclaim and profess that we, for, we want you to forgive our sins and we receive the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. The fact that he is Lord, the fact that he died for our sins and was resurrected to make us whole. We want to receive him right now and to be with you in eternity. We pray this henceforth now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, you are now connected to the family. And as I said earlier, your troubles have not been over. They actually just start. But the beauty is the solution will be right beside you. It's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They might go through the fire, but Jesus will be right there with them and with you. You won't be alone. You won't have the disease of loneliness any longer. Finally, as this altar call concludes if you're here today and you've made that decision to accept Jesus if you're here today you've made that decision to recommit but you don't have a spot to do it with you don't have folks to do it with God says don't forsake the assembly one with another we have an assembly here called Mount Calvary Baptist Church and we're ready and willing to receive you the doors of the church are open just take a moment and meditate and if you wish to join us in the journey your opportunity this is your chance just make your way forward